Senate Republicans, joined by Democrat Joe Manchin, blocked a bill called the Women's Health Protection Act that would codify abortion rights at the federal level. Also, we found out yesterday that when he was president, Donald Trump asked his advisors if China had a hurricane gun that it was using against the United States. Are those two things related? I guess you'll have to stay tuned to find out for more on this. <laughs> it's time for a closer look. Time you think you heard the dumbest thing Donald Trump said or did as president, he somehow finds a way to shock you. I didn't even know I still had the capacity to be shocked by Trump. It's like how even after seven seasons of shocking deaths on Game of Thrones, I still gasped when Littlefinger died. <laughs> oh, uh, I mean, or he lived. I should have said spoiler alert, but if you couldn't guess that Littlefinger was gonna die, then maybe Game of Thrones isn't for you. I mean, he had a goatee and he talked like this. Lady Sansa. <laughs> You can trust me, Lady Sansa. <laughs> now, it might seem weird to be referencing Game of Thrones now, but there is a prequel coming out, and baby Littlefinger is in it. <laughs> Littler finger. Anyway, this has been the news is super depressing, so Seth put a goatee on a baby. <laughs> the point is, I was still shocked yesterday when Rolling Stone reported that Trump kept asking his advisors if China was shooting us with a hurricane gun. According to Rolling Stone, near the beginning of Trump's time in office, he had a pressing question for his national security aides and administration officials. Does China have the secret technology, a weapon even, to create large man-made hurricanes and then launch them at the United States? <laughs> and if so, would this constitute an act of war by a foreign power? And could the U.S. retaliate militarily? Trump repeatedly asked about this, according to two former senior administration officials, and a third person briefed on the matter. And this was at the beginning of his presidency, and somehow his presidency still had a middle and an end. Can you imagine if you went to Starbucks and ordered and the barista said, uh-huh, now what exactly is coffee? And then you went back four years later and that barista was the manager. <laughs> also, Trump is so crazy that he doesn't just ask, does China have a hurricane gun? He's got a bunch of follow-ups assuming the answer is gonna be yes. How does he even get to the follow-ups? Does China have a hurricane gun? And if so, actually, we could just jump in right now and save you some time. They do not have a hurricane gun. Right, but if they did, they don't, sure. But if they were to develop one, they won't. It's never just one question. It's a series of questions. I imagine him sitting in a leather chair with a smoking jacket in the studies, Sherlock style, pondering the implications of his discovery. Is it possible that China is using a hurricane gun to attack us? <laughs> If that is the case, would the use of such a weapon not constitute an act of war against a sovereign country? And if, as international law stipulates, a sovereign nation has the right to defend itself when attacked by an aggressor nation, does that not then imply <laughs> that the logical response would be to respond with a weapon of our own, perhaps? And I am merely brainstorming here a tornado cannon. Maybe this explains why he was so obsessed with how much water there was in hurricanes. He thought China was making them extra wet on purpose. This is a tough hurricane. One of the wettest we've ever seen from the standpoint of water. It's tremendously big and tremendously wet. Tremendously big and tremendously wet. I think that's playing at the art house cinema near my apartment. <laughs> it's French though, so I'm not sure. Trump's unhinged conspiracy theories matter because they are the core of the modern GOP, a party that has repeatedly said Trump is their leader, and if they get their way, we'll put Trump back in power in 2024, either by winning or finishing off the coup they started in 2020. One of our two major political parties is more concerned with conspiracy theories and putting this guy back in the White House than the actual crises we're facing right now, from impending climate disaster to the pandemic to massive wealth inequality, among many things. Senate Republicans are holding up urgent COVID relief money, which could lead to a shortage of tests and medicine. And there's even a baby formula shortage, due in large part to monopolistic control of the market. And yet, shockingly, several senators told the Huffington Post they were unaware of the crisis on Monday. I think all these guys are unaware of the baby formula shortage because they're like 90 years old. I guarantee if there was a Werther's original shortage, <laughs> Charles Grassley would be on the floor of the Senate every day calling on Biden to declare a national emergency. They'd immediately pass a bill 100 to zero requiring Boeing and Raytheon to switch from making planes and missiles to making hard candy, which 
incidentally, we could then use instead of missiles. There's no Kevlar in the world that could stop a barrage of Werther's Originals and ribbon candy, which would make a great scene in an action movie. Firing Werther's missiles! Suck on that. For a long time. Double props. <laughs> it's got to be really good for NBC to pay for two props and a closer look. <laughs> they signed off on pipe, and then we said, we need glasses. And they're like, you got to choose. And we're like, trust me. <laughs> You're going to want both. <laughs> So if senators are too busy to pass COVID relief or address climate change or read up on a baby formula shortage, what are they doing? Well, they're apparently very concerned about a nationwide crime spree involving chalk on sidewalks. Messages in support of abortion rights are showing up outside the home of Republican Senator Susan Collins of Maine. Over the weekend, someone used chalk to write on the sidewalk outside of the senator's home in Bangor. Maine authorities say the senator called police after the message was drawn. It says, Susie, please, Mainers want WHPA. Vote yes, clean up your mess. A spokesperson for Bangor Police says no crime was committed because the chalk message was not threatening. That's right. <laughs> Susan Collins called the cops because someone wrote with chalk on the sidewalk outside her house. Does she freak out when there's a yard sale in her neighborhood? <laughs> And the note wasn't even threatening. It said, please. Although, I'm not sure how chalk on a sidewalk could ever be threatening. Oh, my God. It must be a note from the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> Fair warning, detective. If you step on a crack, you will break your mother's back. <laughs> of course, Susan Collins claims she's pro-choice, but in reality, she and her fellow Republicans would much rather spend their time freaking out about polite chalk messages or the identity of the person who leaked the Supreme Court opinion than the actual substance of what's happening, that the Supreme Court is on the verge of erasing a woman's right to bodily autonomy, and that states are already pushing forward with severe new restrictions on reproductive rights, despite the fact that it seems very possible a conservative leaked the draft opinion to freeze the majority in place. Republicans like Texas Senator Ted Cruz have been insisting it must be a liberal in order to shift the story away from abortion rights and stay focused on the leak. Obviously, Cruz doesn't have any evidence, though. There has never been a leak like this. It can only, in all likelihood, have come from a justice that I think is less likely, uh, perhaps one of the clerks and the leading the leading theory is a conservative clerk who was afraid that one of the conservatives might be persuaded by Chief Justice Roberts and to, to join a much more um, moderate opinion. So do you have the this yeah. liberal clerk who leaked this? Do you have information that suggests that? Because I'm not a moron, because I live on planet Earth. Yeah, you might live here, but clearly you're not from here. I refuse to believe. <laughs> That voice is actually human. You sound like you swallowed a kazoo, and that beard definitely looks like a disguise you'd see in Men in Black. I'm, I'm simply asking why the Biden administration refuses to do anything about the rising price of sugar water. So, we don't know who the leaker is. <clears throat> Ginny Thomas. <clears throat> but Republicans would much rather focus on the leak than the substance of the bill they blocked today because preserving Roe v. Wade is massively popular. In fact, they're so desperate to distract from the fallout of what the Supreme Court is about to do that Cruz went on Fox News this week to claim ludicrously that protests against the Supreme Court's action were somehow worse than the violent coup attempt Trump and Cruz fomented on January 6th. On January 6th of 2021, you had tens of thousands of people peacefully protesting, and yet the corporate media and Democrats slandered them with the, the made-up term insurrectionist. And yet, in this instance, that they are not willing to call off their goons. Yeah, why is the corporate Democrat media slandering all those patriots who peacefully smashed windows and stormed the Capitol, but refusing to crack down on the thugs and goons who are violently writing coded messages in chalk? Has the world turned right side up? <laughs> By the way, Ted Cruz knows what he's doing here. He originally called the insurrection a violent terrorist attack, but then the extreme pro-insurrection wing of his party, led by guys like Tucker Carlson, got mad at him. So he had to reverse himself and go on Fox News to grovel for forgiveness. And now, 
to please Trump and the MAGA base, he's doubling down on calling January 6th a peaceful protest. Next, he's gonna claim he was just flying to Cancun to escape the hurricane gun. They had it aimed right at Texas, but thankfully we were able to neutralize it with President Trump's hurricane wall made out of Werther's. You can't get through it. You can't get through a Werther's wall. We're facing a series of major crises from the rising cost of living to extreme wealth inequality to impending climate disaster to a deadly respiratory disease that's still spreading to a Supreme Court that's poised to erase reproductive rights and the bodily autonomy of tens of millions of women. And yet Republicans would rather whine and throw tantrums about leaks and sidewalk chalk. These people talk about leaks so much. You think their pants were tremendously wet. It's been a closer look, baby. God's Love We Deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help. Now more than ever, if you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, get vaccinated. We love you.